Hi, so we've got Teams, SharePoint Premium, and some loop news this week. So let's get straight into it. First one, we've got remove activity feed in new Teams. So that means in your activity feed, rather than just saying you've marked it as red, you can actually delete it. So if you want to use it more like an inbox and go through your activity feed, which a lot of people tend to want to do, then rather than just reading it and it's sort of staying there, you can actually remove that line item from your activity feed which is useful because sometimes you get multiple act notifications in say the same channel and they're all bold, but you've like gone onto the channel, it thinks you've read everything and you haven't really. So if you want to actually go through and make sure you've caught up with everything, this could be pretty useful. So nice little feature. Some catch up improvements on the web. So this is where if you go into Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and it's got a little catch up button and says, here's what's happened since last time you came into it. Based on some feedback from users, if you're mentioned in one of those files, then that's going to stay in the catch up for 28 days so that you can see everywhere that you've been mentioned. So you can sort of go back to it rather than going into a file, go on catch up and you've been mentioned like 50 times and then you do something else and go back and then all of that's lost. Actually, you just want to go back and through and see where you, know, you can sort of direct yourself to where to go a bit easier using that catch up feature which you could already do through the comments and, and see, but obviously this is uh, seems reasonable to just do it in, in the catch-up summary because you're catching yourself back up. Teams chat is going to be embedded into Outlook on the web. So presumably that's coming into Outlook at some point, I guess, because it seems like they're doing Outlook on the web ahead of any other Outlook. So Outlook for Windows or Outlook on the Mac. I mean, I never use this feature. It's in Outlook in the web at the moment, but it jumps you out into a separate window to go into Teams. And this is going to be sort of more embedded. So like a presumably a pop out window, there's no picture of what it's going to look like in this announcement, but it's going to be embedded into Outlook on the web so you can chat without leaving Outlook. So probably borrowing some inspiration from Gmail and Google Workspace where you can chat without leaving Gmail. I find that for most normal people, when they first get onto Google is a bit jarring because like you don't know if you're sending an email or you're sending a chat. My wife uses that in her school and um, lots of people get confused like where is that thing I sent? It's like well it's a chat, it's, it's not in your email. But it's like well I did it in email, it's like well you didn't really, you did it in, in chat. So hopefully Microsoft will be able to do that a bit better. And yeah, I'm not sure because if you want to do something internally, I always say use a Teams channel, don't use chat. Um, but yeah, better than jumping out into another window from uh, from Outlook anyway. So nice little update there. SharePoint e-signature is coming, which sounds cool. So Microsoft already had Adobe Acrobat Sign and DocuSign sort of embedded into SharePoint syntax, where you could get some from SharePoint, send it out to one of those services, get it signed and come back into your SharePoint instance. And now Microsoft releasing a first party version of that, which I think it'd be interesting because you might want to not, not want to use a third party service. So this keeps it all in the sort of Microsoft sort of governance structure. And so you can send stuff from SharePoint to get signed and come back into the same document library, which will be beneficial and not have to use a third party service. However, I guess with Microsoft and with that control comes a bit of complexity. As an example, if you just want you to just go and get something signed, then DocuSign, for example, you just sign up for the service, pay, put a file in there, send it to the email of the person you want, they sign it, send it back, and it circulates all of the final file with everybody. So I've signed a lot of things through DocuSign. SharePoint, it's even on the, the setting up page, which uh, I should say is only available in America at the moment, is running out everywhere else later on, so I can't try it yet is that <laughs> if they even write certain conditional access rights might determine whether external recipients will be able to sign a document. So depending on the admin setup, external signers might not be able to access and read the document for signing at all, which is obviously not a great experience if you're you know further down the organization, send something to get signed and then the person's like, well I can't even can't even open it because of the IT admin settings which isn't great. In some other cases, they might be able to access document signing, but the signing operation will be unsuccessful. So then they can't even sign it. So obviously there's a way around it. It's like one common way to resolve, one common way to resolve this is to add the Microsoft eSign service to the list of approved apps via the Microsoft Entra Admin Center, which is a greatly, uh, great sentence. But you can see like, well, there's a lot of control and a lot of 
baggage in SharePoint, which is useful for, as we scroll up, expiration of links, document retention settings, you don't need to worry about all that for using a third party service and bring it back into your environment. It's all sort of done as you set it up. Obviously, there's a million different ways that you could set something up, which then could break the signing bit that, uh, that is now coming. So I think it's uh, going to be interesting as long as we get all the, the settings sorted. Hi, I'm Gavin Jones at MeTime. And if you need help making your organization more efficient at work, happening to use Microsoft 365, then we can probably help if you're an organization of 20 knowledge workers or more. If you don't know where to start, that's you, our most popular product. So we can come in, see how you're working as an organization and recommend some ways of working better and happening to use Microsoft. Tools that you're already paying for to make that happen faster. If you're an individual and you don't have any budget, you can still get help from me. We do live Q and A calls every Wednesday if you sign up and you get a free trial for a month using a link in the description below. So I hope to see you inside the MeTime community. And if you want something that's entirely free, you don't need a credit card for, then we've got some free training in the description below, both for individuals and for organizations so you avoid the mistakes that 99% of organizations are still making with how to set up Microsoft at work. And then collaborative notes is coming to channel meetings finally. So if you have a channel meeting, you can use collaborative notes in that meeting to take your notes. So that's a loop component that is in embedded in your meeting. And it'll be more useful in a channel meeting because channel meetings are more useful if you want to keep the history of everything that has been spoken about. And you know your team's channel is the record of where you've done collaboration rather than moving it into a normal call, which appears in chat, where frankly, collaborative notes is like, well, that's just going to get lost into the ether, no one's ever going to go back to those unless you put them back into somewhere else in loop or embed them somewhere else. But because I guess that that is now coming out because loop components are coming into Teams channels and so collaborative notes and channel meetings can come into Teams channels as well. Frustratingly, you can't still put a loop workspace as a tab in Teams, which seems like the most obvious way that you'd want to use loop in Teams. like. Collaborative notes, not a massive fan. Loop components, putting in a team's post is going to go off the screen as more people post underneath. And so the most obvious thing is just I want to get to loop from Teams without jumping back out into the web browser, which Microsoft haven't announced yet. And seems like that's the most obvious thing to do. So yeah, we'll have a look at loop in a subsequent video. I've got a previous video on how to use loop for work, which was based on the preview. We'll have a a video coming out now loops in general release so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you're interested in seeing that when it comes out but i can't help but feel microsoft kind of messing up loop as it was announced it's like well this is going to be notion for microsoft 365 it's going to be really cool and it hasn't really done everything that notion can do or the most useful bits of notion i would say they seem to have focused more on the technical background bit of being able to in real time edit across different places you can see that loop component which is technically very impressive but most people i think don't really need that feature in their heads that's all i can already do that in word i can already co-author in word i can already co-author in excel i can already co-author in powerpoint i can already co-author in OneNote. so why do we need a separate thing to be co-authoring and you know it might be slightly better technically but for normal people, I think they can't really see that benefit. And then Slack, since Loop was announced, Slack have got Slack Canvas, which is like a Notion or Loop bar on the side of your channel, which is like really useful to like pin stuff. You can put stuff in there. You can multiple people can like pin things in and sort of have a community more static place to store stuff rather than just the post bit. So Slack has now just like made Loop way better, don't need one though. It's just like, ah, Microsoft just seemed to be, I don't know, scattergunning loads of stuff rather than like, well, just get me loop in a team's channel. That was the most important MVP bit for me because if you're jumping people out into a web browser, they're probably not gonna use it and people probably aren't taking notes in meetings. If they do, this will get lost. Uh, so yeah, good that it's coming to channel meetings. Hopefully Microsoft sort out getting loop into loop workspaces into Teams at some point in the future as well. And then lastly, really sad news, the first employee to lose their job because of new AI 
has been announced by Microsoft, and it's the WhoBot, if anyone remembers that, which came out when Teams came out, which you may or may not have used for about 10 seconds before you realized it wasn't very useful. The WhoBot is going, so it's been Copilot has overtaken the WhoBot, the WhoBot's out, and uh, they're working to improve the functionality delivered in this feature and provide better user experience. The current version of WhoBot will be retired, so this functionality will be transitioned to Microsoft Copilot in the future. I'm surprised they say in the future, because I would have assumed that if it's already plugged into the Microsoft 365 graph, that it would know who everyone is and what they do. And you could just say, who's Gavin Jones? What does he work on? And it would be able to tell you some stuff, which the WhoBot was not great at doing anyway. And I'm surprised Copilot doesn't just do that out of the box. I'm surprised they say it will transition to Microsoft Copilot in the future rather than it just being done now. Maybe they mean just not everyone's got Copilot yet and uh, who what's going for, everyone gets it, which uh, I don't think many people will be sad about. But um, yeah, I thought that was a little bit funny. So if you like this video, before you go, click the thumbs up button. It really helps us in the algorithm. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon. So we've got new videos on Microsoft at work coming out at least every Tuesday. And thanks for watching so far. We'll see you in the next one.